and I don't want to get like a low grade because, you know, I mentioned that grades are opening this week. And I was telling him, you know, you know what's important. You take care of yourself. I'm, I'm also, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, Mishka. Thank you so much, honey. Yeah, and I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah, so you have to take care of yourself. That's the most important. Who, who cares about math when you're sick, right? Okay, but don't, don't procrastinate on the things that you can do while you can do them. You get what I'm trying to say? Because there are things that we want to do. You know, we want to finish, but we just can't because we're all of a sudden, you know, sick and something like that. So, okie dokie. All right. <laughs> so, we're going to get started over here. Um, where's my honors geometry period six? Okay, here we go. So, in week four, um, we have a new section right here. Go ahead and open those sections for me. Week four. And so far, well, you can delete that untitled page if you don't want to. You can delete that. There you go. You don't want it there. So the very first thing that we will do, wait, did I? Okay. It's called inequalities in one triangle. There you go. So this is where we will begin. Am I sharing? Nope. Now I am. All right. So what I'm going to ask you to do, to get us started is, we'll have an interleave review right here. Okay, why? What's the reason for this? I don't know if um, the UTLA will be successful in not having assessments this year. But I'm just going to play it safe. So if there is an assessment, that means it's going to be from everything we covered in the fall up to where we are now. So I don't want to be like rushing. When they finally say, yes, we're testing. Okay, so I'm just going to do bits and pieces of reviews um, on a weekly basis. Okay? All right. So our first interleave review is lines are parallel when they have the same slope. That's nice. And Chris already got the answer to the first one. Good. X is equal to 110. And Chris, maybe to answer this question over here, you can write down like why you said x is equal to 110. So to answer this one, two lines are parallel. You may type this one. Are parallel. I spelled it wrong. Okay, if and only if you still remember the IFF. Okay, so in number one, what's the condition that you used to find 110, Christopher? Those are what? Alternate exterior, right? So alternate exterior angles are, they must be congruent, correct? All right, so that's how Chris got 110. Now for number two, what theorem or statement or reason can we use for number two to find the value of x? What is the value of x? For number two. Make them equal. That's great. Why? What kinds of angles are they? Alternate exterior. Try again. I have to open the chat for one second because it's only showing me one line. Alternate interior, all right, so alternate interior must be congruent, right? So what is the value of x for number two? Make them equal and then get the x by itself. x equals 28, all right. Are we guys getting why it's 28? Again, if if I'm assuming that you know how to do it, but no, you have to let me know because I won't know until you tell me. So you could say, Miss, can you show us how you got that? But why is that again? Okay, you have you have to tell me. Okay. Number three. So what could be the reason for number three? 
how could we get the value of x for number 3? What kind of angles are those? Same side interior, and how must they be related? Okay, so same side interior. If you type, they should all fit in here, right? If you type all these that I'm writing in green. Okay, so just write them down over there. So same side interior is equal to 180. Okay, that's good. So you have to add them up. Make them equal to 180. You may get a negative, you may get a positive. If you get a negative, don't doubt your answer. It doesn't mean you're wrong. Because you may get a negative here, and you, if you plug it in, the angles will still come out to be positive. So go ahead, do, do that. Make them equal. And get the value of x that will make their sum equal to 180. Okay. There's a lot of messages in my mind. Okay. What is x? Chris got negative 2. You agree with Chris? If you do, type negative 2 in the chat box. Otherwise, DM me, miss, how do you get that? Or miss, can you show that? Uh-huh. If you agree, type negative 2 in the chat box. Otherwise, let me know. Alright. Cool. That's great. You're also getting negative 2. Yes, it's okay to get a negative for this one because when you plug it in, the, ant the, the angles, like this will become 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. So this angle will become 100, right? And this will become 80. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, very good, very good. So that is our quick review today on parallel lines. We have more theorems like alternate, I mean, like corresponding. So maybe you can add that. Corresponding um, angles are congruent, right? Oh, or you could just type the whole word congruent. There you go. So corresponding angles, they must be congruent, right? Okay. So hopefully, like, you'll type all those up over here. It would all fit in here on the left-hand side. Okay, so that was a quick review. Um, I'm going to erase the ink so we can move on. So we're closing off the chapter by studying inequalities. Yep. What do inequalities have to do with triangles? That's interesting, huh? So we're going to start. I have here a new Desmos exploration for you. Okay, I am not fluent in Desmos as I am in GeoGebra, so pardon me if I'm also kind of learning it the first time with you. So let me just minimize or resize my screen so I can open Desmos on the other side. All right, so click on this Desmos exploration. What is our goal here? Our goal is to compare angle measures and side lengths. Okay? At the end of the exploration, we should be able to answer the question, how are the sides related to the angles of a triangle? Okay? So that's our goal. Well, let's click on this one. I will try to open this in another window so I can show them side by side. Um, if you're not signed in, try if you can sign in to save the changes. You can do that over here. Always use your LAUSD account so they all go to your drive. Okay. Um, all right, maybe I should move this a little bit. Okay. So keep our goal in mind. We're trying to find a relationship between the sides and the angles. Okay. I have to move the chat window because I don't see the triangle on the other side. Okay. All right. So first things first. Find the side lengths and angle measures of the triangle. So you got to measure each side. And how do you do that? Okay, it's quite different here in, in GeoGebra. You click on one side. 
yeah and then some options here will come up you click on across length you click on add label excuse me it should show you the length of that segment okay so it's quite different from GeoGebra now we're going to do it again so here you click it then add label and then do it again click and then add label there you go okay so we are now going to record those here yeah okay so go ahead and do that on your notebook so record them type them in my AB is 5.02, my AC is 7.65, my BC is, okay. All right. So now, if, if our, tri well, our triangles must look the same, right? The measures may be different, but okay if you resize your triangle you may have different values but that's okay all right so next we're going to measure the angles and i want you to know i want you to look at how i arrange them if the side is a b i put the angle that's across it opposite let's say look this is a b yeah so the one opposite is C. If you're confused with that, the shortcut is there are only three letters in the triangle. So if side AB is 5.02, the letter that's not in there, that's the angle opposite. So with or without the triangle, you should be able to kind of identify what's the opposite angle. All right. So we have to measure the angle. How do you do that? We click on this one. To measure an angle, you choose a point. So let's go one and then choose another point. Two and then three if there's another way let me know okay next do it again a b c do it again a c b okay so those are the measures all right now we're going to list them down again here so c has 39, uh, B is 74, A is 67, all right, and in number two, you're going to do the same thing, but you're just going to reorder them if needed, so I want the longest here, if you resize your triangle, definitely you'll have a different, you know, right? So erase these if you need to. Okay, but if you kept the same triangle that you had at the very beginning, then we all should have the same measurement. So AC is 765, BC is 737, and AB is 5.02. Last one, largest is what? Largest is 74. Medium is 67 and smallest is 39. So after listing those down, you have to answer the question, what do you observe? What do you observe? And maybe you can already answer our end goal in mind. Okay, if you don't want to answer it here, go ahead and answer the question on the left hand side. Type your answer in. How are the sides related to the angles of a triangle? Okay, go ahead and try to answer that. The answer is kind of, you know, given away already. It's already in the next box, but I want you to answer that question in your own words. Like, how, how would you, like, memorize it easier? Or how would you remember it easier? Or what's your understanding of what you saw in the decimal? Go ahead, I'll give you some think time, and then I'll ask somebody to share what you wrote in the text. Mm -hmm. How are the sides? And the opposite angles related. How are the sides 
and the opposite angles related. Um, I think somebody DM'd me. I have to like open the chat in the other device. Okay. How did you get some of the tools to show up? Oh, um, this one, honey. You can you can click on this. If they're if they're hidden, click on that so they will show up. And then if you want to measure a side, you will click on a side of the triangle. And then there's something here that says Add Label. You're gonna click on that. So I don't know which is which you needed, but I explained both. And then if it's an angle, you just click on this. All right, all right. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so now in the chat, I wanted to share what you wrote to answer the question on the left-hand side. So how are the sides related to the angles of a triangle? James said the longer a side length, the bigger the opposite angle, and the converse is also true. Yeah, so it works both ways. So in other words, the largest angle is always opposite the longest side. If you can at least remember that, then everything else follows the same rule. If it's a medium-sized angle, across it is the medium-length side. If it's the smallest angle, across it is the shortest side. That's great. Okay, so in your textbook, these these two at the bottom, you know, I just copied and pasted it exactly as they are. That's how it's being worded in your textbook. If one side of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite the longer is larger um, than the angle opposite the shorter side. And it has another version at the bottom, right? So, but I think what's most, what's more important is you can answer these questions in your own words based on what you understood from from the exploration yes and if you could just remember it how you know james said it in the chat across the longer side is a bigger angle and vice versa and everything everything else follow the same rule okay so that's why i ordered them here longest it's across the largest you see that Okay, cool. All right, I'll give you like 10 seconds to ask questions about that before we switch to another exploration. You can click your, you can save the changes you did. Okay, I'm going to click save. All right. And then save. Duplicate, I have to duplicate it because like I use it several periods. Yeah, so it's always safe to have a different version for each period. In your case, maybe it's not going to ask you that. All right, any questions so far? Okay, then let's try to look at some examples at the bottom while it's still fresh in your mind. Go to the bottom right here. <clears throat> Okay, let's try let's try maybe number one and then another from here. And then we'll continue later. Okay, so let's do number one. Order the angles in each triangle from smallest to largest. Smallest to largest. Now I suggest just so you don't keep writing smallest to largest, you can make some codes, you know, like um for example, if you can label smallest as your A and largest is your C, so when you write A, B, C, you know that they're kind of following that order. I'm zooming, honey. Okay. All right, so I need help with number one. Which angle is the smallest? Which angle is the smallest? Close the door for me, honey. J. J is the smallest angle. Yes, because it's across the shortest side, right? Cool. Next. So what's the medium one? K. Because it's across 16. And of course, the largest will be L. Very nice. Okay, so did you understand how to use the exploration we just did? 
Is it easy? Well, let's move on. Let's try, let's try to do one of each type instead of doing all from one part. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, this is similar, but you're just naming the largest and the smallest, right? But I want to do something like this, where there is no triangle. Okay, let's do number seven. There is no triangle. If you want to draw it, sure. Okay, you're welcome to do that. But how will you answer this? Uh, I forgot. What are we supposed to be doing again? The largest. So let me call the largest A and the smallest B. Okay, so what is your largest and what is your smallest in number seven? Would a shortcut be the only letter not named? Yeah. So remember I mentioned that earlier? There's only three letters in a triangle. Whatever is missing, that's the angle across it. Yep, so you don't have to show your triangle all the time. So with that in mind, what's letter A? What's the largest? You agree with James? You? If you agree, type you. You agree with Mishka and James? They put you, Ricky, also you. What about the others? If you agree, type you. If you don't type, that means you're not sure. You're like still figuring it out. I just want to make sure that you guys understand what we're doing. So humor me in this one. Awesome. Okay, so, yep, it's you. Perfect. Next, what's the smallest angle? Smallest angle. V for Ismail, V for James, V for Mishka. The smallest angle. Oh, okay, yeah, smallest. We're not looking for the medium one. There you go. Uh-huh. Yep. That's perfect. Very good. Okay, great. So you, you know the technique there already, okay? So find a letter that's not in the given. Okay, what else is next? Um, ordering, okay, let's try, let's try number 12. Number 12. You have to order the sides of the triangle from short to long. So I'm going to put A for short, B, no, C for the longest, okay? So for number 12, give me the shortest side, the medium size, and the longest one. What's the shortest size? Okay, it's taking you some time. You agree with James? TU is the shortest? I yeah, only got one answer in the chat. Just giving them some wait time. If you find me, if you find me too slow, you can do the other items while waiting for us. I just want to make sure I don't leave anybody behind. Okay, yeah, you can you can switch the letters around. It doesn't matter. U S is the same as S U. Uh huh. Okay, what about the others? You guys agree with that order? T U S T S U. I'm just trying to use a shortcut I thought of. Okay. All right, so shortest is across 50, so TU, right? After 50 is 60, so that's ST. And last but not the least, this is the biggest, 70, so SU. That's great, you guys. Not a lot, you know, enter the answers in the chat box, though, so I'm not sure if you guys have some questions or you're just too lazy to switch from one window to another. So I hope it's the latter, but... <laughs> okay. All right. So are you guys getting this? Can I have like a quick yes or no? Um, just so I can make sure that, uh-huh. Okay, that's great, you guys. All right. Nice. Okay, thank you for letting me know. 
Okay, so let's go back up and learn a new lesson. No, not a new lesson. I mean, it's a new part of the lesson in the textbook. This one is about. Oh no, my battery is low. All right, so let's click on this second exploration right here. Our end goal in mind is how are any two sides of a triangle related to the third side? How are any two sides of a triangle related to the third side? Okay, how would I normally do this in the classroom? You know, in the classroom, if we are in school physically, I will Pythagorean theorem. Mm, okay, hang on to that. So, normally I would have each group, you know, create paper strips of different sizes. And then I'm going to have every member pick three strips at random. And I'll tell them, form a triangle if you can. So, take note of those combinations that can form a triangle. Okay, but we're not in school. So let's click on this. Um, it's, it's not as fun as if we, as if when we will do it by hand, but okay, this will do for now. Where's my decimals? Oh, here. Okay. You like using computers better. Okay, I get you. Uh huh. When I did my master's, my my thesis was, you know, if there if computer assisted instruction has significant effect on students' learning. Uh huh. And and when I did that, it was like you probably were not born yet. Yeah. So that was so long time ago. And the the fi my findings based on the students that I that I included in my thesis, um, there, there is a significant, you know, difference between um, the scores of those who use computers and those who just use paper and pen. Yeah. Okay. All right, so moving on. Here we go. Find perhaps the measures of two sides is equal or greater than the third one. Okay. So your theory is that it's equal or greater. Yeah, equal or greater. Okay, here we go. So let's measure the sides again. You remember how to do them? You click on a side and then click on add label. All right. Click it. Add label. Oh, why is it not doing it? Okay, add label. All right. Both sides could make up 33%. And you would be right. Huh? What do you mean? As a minimum? Greater. Okay, you lost me. Maybe I'm not getting it right. So, okay, so moving on. This one, A, B. Then add label. Okay, so now let's write them down. What are they? Um, two sides are always greater than one side. Do you mean like the sum of two sides can be less than the third one? The sum of two less than the third? Oh. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. What's AB? 3.61. What's BC? 5. What's a, what's a, where's my AC? I'm lost, 5.1. I have a question, I'm just curious. So when you opened the decimals thing, did it also show you like the same triangle I have? So do we, are we looking at the same exact thing? Like 5.1, oh, okay, that's cool. All right, thank you. Just, just want to make sure, okay. All right. So now, compare each side length with the sum of the other two side lengths. Oh, and 
And we gotta do this in order, yeah? We have to do this in order. Let's try. Let's add these two first, okay? So, AB plus BC, that's equal to how much? That's 8.61, am I right? Okay, now compare that to the last one that we didn't add. So that is greater than 5.1, isn't it? Okay, now let's do it again. We gotta do it in order so you, we don't miss any. I'm gonna do the, I did the first and the second, now I do the first and the third, yeah? We gotta try every possible combination. See, Marcelo? Okay, see. Um, what am I gonna do now? A, B plus A, C. How much is that? 8.71. Okay. Now, that's greater than, that's greater than, what did I not add? Five. There you go. That's greater than five. Mm -hmm. Agree so far? Okay, well, let's try the last one. So I did the first, the first and the second, the first and the last. So now I gotta do the second and the last, right? So I don't have space. So I'm gonna put it here. Oh, it's okay, Madeline. I'm happy that you were able to come back. And I'm also like screencasting it this. I know there's been a lot of internet problems, so I went back to screencasting. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay, I'm going to add BC plus AC, which becomes 10.1, right? So this is 10.1, which is also bigger than, which one did I not add? 3.61. Sorry, I went over the other window, but you get what I mean, right? Okay, so it's greater than 3.61. Okie dokie. So what did we find out? So how are any two sides of a triangle related to the third side? So you might want to like answer that question over here. So when you're studying for, let's say, a Schoology thing or chapter test, all you need to do is read the answers to the questions on the side, you know? Uh huh. So you can just review faster. Any two sides of a triangle is greater than a third side. Very good. And I want to emphasize on what Mishka said: greater than, no equal. Yeah, no equal. Make sense? Okay. Now let's do a little. Let's do a little. Um, fun thing. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna erase all this. All right, I'm going to close this. Uh, oh, did I save it? My bad. Save, 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 save. Okay. All right, be ready with the chat, okay? Um, okay, so, so don't do this on your notebook. We're just going to do it real quick in the chat. Okay, I'm going to give Kahoot. I tried to find one, but I couldn't find any inequality. I will, yeah, maybe I have to find something in quizzes. Okay. All right, here we go. No, we're just going to do it real quick for now. Okay. I'll try harder um, to find one. Maybe in quizzes there is one. I promise on Friday we'll have one. Okay, here we go. Ooh, if I have, okay, if I have 6, 8, 10, say yes if they form a triangle, no if they don't. Yes or no? Yes, they form a triangle. No, they don't form a triangle. So yes or no? Remember what you said earlier, or what Mishka said earlier. The sum of any two must be greater than the third, meaning when you add any two numbers, it must be greater than the th remaining number. So is this a yes? I only saw two answers, and I don't know if only two understood it or you're still thinking. Yes, 
Because this is 14 greater than 10. 18 greater than 6. 16 greater than 8. Next. 2, 3, 5. 2, 3, 5. <laughs> okay, why not? Why don't they form a triangle? Why don't they form a triangle? Because too big. What? Yes, that's a good one. Chris and Mishka, 2 plus 3 equals 5. And we found out that it has to be strictly greater than, not equal. Not equal. Okay. All right. Next. Next. Suppose I have 2 and 3. If 5 doesn't make it a triangle, give me a number that can make that set a triangle. 4. Only 4. 1 and 4. So only you're saying there's only two possibilities. See? No. No, 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 no. Okay, it's not only two possibilities. <laughs> Three. Okay, so I will how how can you figure out the possible solutions without guessing? Draw. Ooh. Okay. I'm not saying that's wrong, but you could. Yeah, you can draw. Anything above 1.1 and below 4.9. Oh, how did you get that? James, how did you get that? Math? Well, then explain the math. <laughs> okay, 5 would make it equal. All right. Zero would be, would be thing. Oh, will be nothing. Okay. All right. I didn't understand. That. Oh, sorry, Bixby. All right. So here's, yeah, James. I want to hear your shortcut. Yeah, say it aloud. Mm-hmm. So anything above one, that's not worth. Mm-hmm. We can't be five. Mm-hmm. So it's below five. I just did like one point one, four point nine to make it shorter, so I don't think I can. Okay, okay. So so actually there is there is a shortcut, there is a pattern. So if this is X, X is actually between what am I writing? Yeah. X is actually between the difference. And the sum. Mm -hmm. So try to make sense of that. So meaning in this example, x is actually between, okay, what's the difference between 3 and 2? 1. What's the sum of 3 and 2? 5. So there you go. Anything between 1 and 5. So 1.001 is okay. 4.999995 is okay. As long as it's not 1, it's not 5, and it's not smaller than 1, it's not bigger than 5. So using that shortcut, can you try this? Uh -huh. Okay, suppose my numbers are 6 and 10. What could x be? So that they would form a triangle. You can say x is between what? Or you can use the inequality symbols on your keyboard. Okay. So from what number to what number? From 5 to 11. Really? Try again. I'm using 6 and 10. So... You minus them and then you add them. That's how you get the number. You minus them. Uh-huh. Okay. So the difference is 4. Right? 
and then the, the sum is 16. Okay, yes, yeah, so from 4 to 16. All right, now that's the shortcut. You always ask me for extra credit. Now, this is, a, I think, a good place for extra credit. So if you, okay, so, so for those of you who want extra credit, let's say if I have these two numbers, 6, 10, and x, you need to find, you need to show me another solution to find x without using the shortcut. Or in other words, you gotta show me that it works, or you have to prove to me that it works each time. Okay, so, yep, if you do that for extra credit, you will be excused from the next Delta Math assignment. So you will get a perfect score even if you don't want to do it. Okay, so that's your extra credit. So you got to show that this is the answer using a different method. I don't like drawing though. Okay, I don't like drawing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to show it algebraically. All right. Okay. So let's answer the. It's one fifty. Why this time? I don't know. It just moves so quick. Okay. Here we go. Um. Do these form a triangle or not? This one four nine ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, they do. Perfect. Next one. Second one. 8, 9, and 18. Do they form a triangle or no? No, no. Okay, that's great. Last question. A triangle has one side length of 14 and another side length of 9. Describe the possible length of the third side. Describe the possible length of the third side. From 5 to 23. You agree with Mishka? From 5 to 25. From 5 to 23. Mm-hmm. Why 25, James? You get a 25 girl. Uh huh. What about the others, you guys? You understand how we're getting it? I mean, I wish you were in school. I, I, I probably would be able to see it from your faces, but now I don't know, so you have to let me know. Okay. All right, so, yeah, it should be from 14 minus 9, so that's 5. So that's the lower limit. 14 plus 9, that's 23. So that's the upper limit. So, so it should be from 5 to 23. Okay? Alrighty, so now let's continue working on your check for understanding um, earlier, the bottom. And here are some more. Since you always ask for extra credit anyway, you have some enrichment optional problems over here. You know where to check your answers from, right? But for this one, you need to kind of show the work, like why, if you want extra credit, you got to explain why. Yes, and my extra credit is being excused from, like getting the full credit for the next Delta Math even without doing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's my extra credit. It's not going to be like additional points. So take it or leave it. <laughs> it's pretty much just like a homework pass. All right. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. All right. So, guys, if you have any questions, I, I, I'll be able to help you with that. If you have no questions, please go ahead and continue. Um, Finishing this check for understanding.
if you want to do it while you are in Zoom, you are welcome to do so. I'm, I won't log out until 2.05. But if you want to do it on your own, um, you may log off too. But make sure you are marked present in the attendance, okay? So let's see. Hi, Mishka. That's a good question. Yeah, so Mishka, that's a good question. We have like one lesson away. One lesson left from this chapter, so most likely um, you will have a chapter test next week. Yep. Uh huh. Yes. We will. Yeah, Friday. Okay. So, uh huh. Giselle, Rudy, you guys, you two, you guys are making me do this attendance sheet. Okay, so. Ricky, I saw Ricky here earlier. Uh, Manuel Sandoval is here. Marcelo is here. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, guys. So do your check for understanding, either online or offline. I'll stay.